Okay, characteristic number two. This is a little bit trickier. Uh, we've got a couple scenarios to go through. Um, and don't worry if it's a little confusing at first. There's kind of a, I don't know, we'll call it a formula or a recipe to follow when we get through it. But I want to explain where these different scenarios come from so you know what, what the background for them is. Okay, so we're going to look at today whether there's a horizontal or oblique asymptote. By the way, oblique just means like a diagonal line. Okay, so taking a look at this one, you know, obviously our first step would be to say, hey, x can't be negative 4, and then so we know there's a vertical asymptote there. Okay, so let's, let's do that. There would be a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4. Okay, so we learned that in the last lesson. Okay, now what's next? Okay, I wrote here, the degree of the expression in the numerator is less than the degree of the expression in the denominator. Well, remember, degree is the highest power of the variable. So if you look up here, the highest power is actually 0. And if you look in the denominator, the highest power is 1. So the expression in the numerator is 0. The expression in the denominator is 1. 0 is less than 1. When this happens, you will always have an asymptote at y equals 0. Why? Well, think about this. If the value of x gets really big, so infinitely big, okay? So think of the biggest number you can imagine, all right? So we would have y equals negative 4. Let's say this is like 1 gazillion, like with a whole bunch of zeros here, okay? You can see this number would end up becoming very, very small. And in fact, the bigger the number gets in the denominator, the smaller this gets, it approaches zero. This is why we have an asymptote at zero. So when x approaches infinity, gets super, super big, so that's like getting way over here, all right, it's going to get closer and closer to zero. So we would put an asymptote here, because the value of the graph is going to get slower, closer, and closer to zero. Okay? So, all you have to think about is, if the degree of the enumerator is less than the denominator, I have an asymptote at y equals zero. Okay? Let's check out the next scenario. All right, again, let's do the vertical asymptote first. You can see there's a vertical asymptote at one. Okay, we'll always get used to doing this first. Okay, now, look at the degree this time. The degree in the numerator is 1, the degree in the denominator is 1. They have the same degree. Okay, when they have the same degree, I'm going to show you what happens if I divide. Now, you will never have to do this for this example. Okay, but if we take 1... This is from x minus 1. And then this is 2x minus 3. So I'm just synthetically dividing into here. What do I get? Well, there's a remainder of negative 1. I get, I get a value of 2. When I divide, it equals 2. Okay, so the quotient is 2, and the remainder is negative 1. So the remainder can be written as a fraction of the divisor. So take a look at this. If I do this operation and I divide... What do I get? I get 2 with the remainder of 1 over x minus 1. Okay, this is another way to write the remainder here. Okay, so if x gets really, really big, and I put a really big number in there, remember that means we get 0. So for now, I'm, I'm going to like ignore this. When x gets really big, we have an asymptote at y equals 2. Okay? So I'll put an asymptote at 2. So, let's just review that. Here is my e equation. So what you would do is you would say, hey, I'm looking at the degrees, they're the same. If they're the same, how do I know what the horizontal asymptote is. Well, if x were to get really big, so you'd have infinity over infinity, two infinities over one infinity 
this is 2. So here I see that I have a horizontal asymptote at 2. So the easy way to do this is just to look at the coefficients of the highest degree. Okay? So we'll, we'll confirm that in a minute. We'll write down sort of some rules. All right, there's one more scenario. Okay. So, third scenario. If you look at the degree here, you have degree 2, degree 1. This time, the degree of the numerator is greater. Okay, that's the third scenario. If the degree of the expression in the numerator is greater than the degree of this expression in the denominator, what happens then? Okay, again, we'll divide. So if I put negative 1 into, this is 1x squared plus 0x plus 0. Okay, I get a remainder of 1. This time, I don't just get a number. I actually get, this is actually x minus 1. Okay, that's the quotient. Here it is. I get x minus 1 plus this is the remainder. And remember, if we make this equal to infinity, this is actually equal to 0. So as x gets really, really big, this is what's left. That's the equation of an oblique line. Okay? So what is that line? x minus 1. So we're going to have an oblique asymptote y equals x minus 1. All right, why is that again? Well, here's, here's the statement you should look at. Okay, if x gets to be super, super big, all right, then this remainder that we ended up with is like equal to 0. And so all we have is this equation left. So you have a, a oblique asymptote. Okay, so let me summarize this. This is what you should remember. So I, I gave you the explanation there, but I don't expect you to go through all those steps. Here's what you're going to do. When you see a rational function like this, if the there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Okay? So if the numerator has a less degree, that's kind of what you did in grade 11. You get y equals 0. If the degrees are the same, okay, if the degrees are equal, then you will just take the coefficients of the lead power, the greatest power. And there is an oblique asymptote if the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. Now, little comment here. This is what the trickiest one you actually will have to divide for this one. The top two, you just have to look at the e equation. So let's take let's take a couple examples here. Okay. So here we have an equation. Let's factor it. So this is x plus seven, x minus one x plus 2. So factored it. First thing I see is x can't be negative 2. There will be a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2 because there are no factors that cancel out. Okay, next I'm looking at the degrees. Okay, so this this first part, this is to figure out what's going on with the vertical asymptotes. Okay, next we need to consider horizontal asymptotes. So I see degree is 2 there, degree 1 there. Okay, and I'll write this. Normally you don't need to. Degree of numerator is 2. Degree of denominator is 1. Since 2 is greater than 1, we have an oblique asymptote. Now, what is the oblique asymptote? Because we have to find the equation. So you're going to have to divide. So we'll take negative 2. Okay, that's from the denominator. 
right? Negative 2 is the value of a, and we're going to divide it into the numerator. So bring down the 1, get negative 2, 4, negative 8, negative 15. I don't care about that. I don't need that. What I need is this. The oblique asymptote is y equals x plus 4. Okay? So I think that's all we're supposed to do for this question. Write the equations of these asymptotes. Okay, we're not drawing it yet. That's all we're going to do for now. Okay, find all of our asymptotes. Okay, let's try the next one. Again, we have to factor. So here, x cannot be negative 3. There is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. Okay, then I look at the degrees. Degree is 1, degree is 2. What happens when the degree of the numerator is less? When the degree of the numerator is less, there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Always. Okay? All right. Next example. It says, for each graph below, determine any non-permissible values. Okay, and decide whether that's a whole or a vertical asymptote. Determine the equations of any horizontal or oblique asymptotes and determine the domain. Okay. All right. So let's try that. First step, graph. Sorry, factor. Okay, nothing cancels out, so I know that x can't be negative 3, so there is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. Okay, looking at the degrees, I have 2 over 1. What happens when the numerator has a higher degree? There will be an oblique asymptote. Okay, so I need to divide negative 3 into 1, 1, negative 12. So the oblique asymptote at y equals x minus 2. Okay. Now, we can already start to try to sketch this. What's this going to look like? Well, there's a vertical asymptote at x is negative 3. There's an oblique asymptote at x minus 2. Now, you guys need to be pretty good at graphing a line already, but very quickly, what would the x-intercept be? It would be 2. What would the y-intercept be? It would be negative 2. Okay, and make sure you know this is a dotted line because it's an oblique asymptote. It's not actually part of the graph. Um, I notice here I should keep going like that. Okay. So now what would the graph look like? Well, our next steps would be to find some intercepts. Okay. But we'll go into those in the next couple of examples after this one. All right, factor. Okay, and hopefully you can see 1 plus x and x plus 1 are the same. So, I have non-permissible values at plus or minus 1, but what is happening? There is a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. Okay, that's from this factor. And there is a hole at negative 1. Now, where does that one come from? The hole comes from the factor that's cancelled out. 
Okay, but I still need to find the y value. Let's see what's left. If I cancel that out, I'm now left with y equals x minus 3 over 1 minus x. If I put a negative 1 into this equation, I get negative 1 minus 3 over 1 take away negative 1. So this is negative 4 over 2. So I get negative 2. That's where the hole is. Okay. Now, I'm graphing this. Because I've cancelled out a factor. This is what's left to graph. Is there a horizontal asymptote or an oblique asymptote? Well, take a look at the degrees. Degree is 1. Degree is 1. If the degrees are the same, what do you do? There's a horizontal asymptote at, at what? y equals, what are the coefficients? The coefficients are 1 over negative 1. So it's going to be at y equals negative 1. Okay, so if I'm graphing, I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 1. And there's going to be a hole at negative 1, negative 2, somewhere around here. Usually I wait to draw the graph and then just put the hole in later, but for now we can do this. Okay, so that's our introduction to graphing. We will have one more lesson on this where we actually complete them and actually draw the lines. Okay, um, use graphing technology. Again, I told you you don't need to do that to solve a rational equation. You actually did this in grade 11. Okay, let me quickly emphasize this. The only thing I could see you ever having to do is if it already gave you the graph. So I don't know. Let's make this up. Here's y equals x. And the other graph, that's going to be some sort of, uh, I don't know, I think it's like this. Okay? And it says, solve. How would you solve this equation? Well, you would look for what is the x value that makes this true. Okay? Remember, that's, that's all you would have to do. If you did this algebraically, you could cross multiply here and solve it that way. But I don't think you'll get that. That's a grade 11 question. Okay, so we'll leave this. That is the end of this lesson. I'll give you some homework to do. All right, you can do page 104, numbers 1 to 3. By the way, if you're starting to do this and you want to check things, you can always use Desmos. Desmos is a great way to check your answers if you don't want to look them up, although they are posted. Okay, so do numbers 4 to 12 here. Don't do number 8 or number 11. Okay?